listening to the Cerberus Gridiron Podcast. <laughs> And now your hosts, Christian and Chris, powered by By Cerberus Fantasy Sports. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Welcome to the Server and Goddard Podcast. I am your host, Christian underscore CFS. How are you doing this evening? I got your co-host right there, Mr. K-Camp. How you doing, Mr. Camp? I am doing well. I cannot complain, and I won't complain because ain't nobody listening. What <laughs> up? What up, my good people? <laughs> shalom, my Kim, to my good people, and shalom, my Kim, to my bad people. May you learn how to become good because why? We need good people in this world. Got the national championship going. Is we recording? Yep, yep. Uh, as of right now, during this recording, we got Yuka now. I am streaming, so it might be a little delay as well, too. I think UConn is up 41 to 32. Yeah, that's what I see. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Chill out. Gee. But yeah, that was, a, uh, that was a nice dunk right there. That, that he just got happened, that one off but... the rim. Yeah, he did. So, since we're talking about national championship, so – who do you have winning? I got UConn winning. I, I want, okay. I want, yeah, I want UConn to win. Okay, okay. Because it'll be the first time that we've seen um, a team go back to back in a while since since yeah. UConn, I think, wasn't it? Uh, uh-uh, since uh, Florida 0708 with uh, Joe okay. Kim, Yo Kim Noah, and yep. yeah, the boys. Okay, yeah. It's, I was thinking about Yeah, them boys. Yeah. Yo, Kim, no one. Okay, yeah. So it's been 07 away since the last time. Okay, okay. So, yeah, man. So, what's you been up to? How's work week? You know. Work week is good. Work week is um, – I uh, I put in – you know, I told my boss the other day, it was it Thursday, Friday? I mean, Friday, Friday, Thursday, that, you know, put in my week's notice. I will officially put in my week's notice this week. My two weeks notice. I did a background, so I just waited on my background check to come back. Well, she should come back good. We just went. They, they do a, so, they do a, a credit check. They do a background check. Like that. Working for the feds. Shit, it's just a damn bad. Hey, Amen. But yeah, that's what happened. So we got so so the what's name was good then. The what? The uh, interview that that you had. Yeah, yeah. I thought I told you I got it. I was just they, they offered me to me verbally. I didn't accept it verbally. I just didn't have the paperwork so. I didn't get too hot without having the paperwork. Well, now the paperwork's in, so now we just got to pass the background, and we all systems go. Okay, no, that's why I was just trying to make sure because I was like, "Well, I didn't, I ain't know, so I didn't want to put stuff into the." Mm-mm. Know, I, we need it. Put it there. May, May, okay. I started it tentatively May first, so. Hey, round so of applause! Hey, thank you, okay. thank you for the support. I'm a long road because, because you know we've been talking about it for like a minute though. Man. Hey, well, I'm happy Man. for you. I'm happy for you. And if people watching this, y'all should be happy too. <laughs> yeah, because the boy put in work. <laughs> they put say trust the plot. They say enjoy that process. That process suck. But uh, yeah, that <laughs> dude was just ready for it to get over with. Yeah. But yeah, man, let's go on and get into the news. Uh, so I know since last time we talked, we really didn't get to talk about the uh, the uh, Stefan Diggs trade and everything that actually transpired. Yeah, I, I was thinking so, when it happened, I was like, "Oh, we need to talk about that." I was like, because I was just talking about that. Yeah. So that's the one thing, like, we get to talk about that. But what are your thoughts? And, like, how do you see Houston? And what, what do you think about the whole Buffalo Bills and their whole debacle and everything? It's getting ugly up there, up in Buffalo. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So let me go back to I – was, I was a guy who had Stephon Diggs. I traded Stephon, Stephon Diggs for first in 2025 draft. I'm projecting, prognosticating that it's going to be a top – at least a top six pick. Um, so 
that's why I made the trade. And I think that they are earmuffs. They are fucking Josh Allen. They're going to waste his prime. I am not a um, McDermott fan. He's a defensive head coach. You know, I'm more about an offensive coach. Or if you're a defensive head coach, you need to have a stellar offensive coordinator, like when he had Dayball. Dayball's gone, obviously. Yeah. It, it's been Josh Allen's been going down, 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 down. He need, he need, he needs that offensive coordinator in his ear because he's a gunslinger. He trying to do too much. Um, so I think Buffalo's going to ruin his prime. <laughs> If they don't get him, I know they're probably going to draft somebody at 28 or wherever they're picking. Um, yeah. You know, he might put up the same production as if they're picking out one of the top three wide receivers. But, man, it's too much of a crapshoot. I don't like what they're doing. Um, and as far as Stephon Diaz going there, I think personally he's the number one in, in the Houston Texans. You and your son do not do not think so. <laughs> but – I think still he would be number one, um, and he's playing out this year. This is his final contract year, so I, I, I guess him more incentivized to ball out um, because he's trying to get paid at least one more time, right? Trying to find somebody to give him another three, four year contract. He can get paid going to Kansas City the Chiefs next year. Watch this. Um, so yeah, I, I was shocked, but so I was shocked by the trades. Um, yeah, I, so I don't know if his value is higher. I guess his value was higher before I trade him. Yes, his value was higher before I trade him, I think. So I traded him at a good time, I think. Your um, thoughts? I think it was a good trade for him, personally, because uh, he gets out of Buffalo. Um, he's not in the cold anymore, even though I don't think that had a factor to do anything. Mm-hmm. But um, just looking at the whole situation and, and then how things were actually going on in Buffalo, I don't think him and Josh Allen had a good relationship. It started off yeah. good because that was – I think it was sort of like, you know how um, – it was like a honeymoon season. So it was mm-hmm. just like a honeymoon, and mm-hmm. he was just happy to get out of Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And once he got to Buffalo, he was like, yeah, I'm just happy, man. I'm, I'm, I'm out of Minnesota. So he did what he did the first couple of years. But then, you know, what normally happens after a daggone honeymoon? The honeymoon series is over, and you start seeing the real character of the person. And then it's like, okay, maybe this wasn't a good deal to actually trade for this guy. So what am I going to do? Brandon Bean was like, I'm going to do whatever I got to do just to get you off the team. Maybe he was thinking he was going to end up being a cancer on on the team. Mm -hmm. So... He said, hey, I'm just going to give up whatever I got to give up just to get you off the team. They ate 31 million. That shows you that he – it had to do something with Stephon Diggs and then the culture or something because you just don't give up a guy like that and then just say, I'm just going to eat 31 million. And eat 31 million. So I think there was something up in the locker room, something that that he was like, hey, maybe Diggs came to him and was like, hey, get me out of here. You already saw how it was last year with uh, Buffalo and then Josh Allen and them going back and forth up on the sideline. So I just think they did what what was best for Stefan, gave him two, I wouldn't say a contender, but I would say that the Houston Texans are not going to be a team to actually play with this year, especially what they did last year. The one thing that I can say about D'Amico Ryans is that he is physically given everything that he needs to his rookie, to his rookie QB. He already seen how to do it up in, up in San Francisco. And only thing he's Mm -hmm. doing is bring that exact same philosophy down to Houston. And with him doing that, man, the sky's the limit for CJ Stroud because he's still up on that rookie deal. I don't say – so, like, one of the guys asked me um, who I'm, like, cool with. Uh, it's like the Co-Pilots podcast. They was talking about um, where do they see the actual Houston Texans. I don't see them in Super Bowl contenders with this trade, but I do – but I can foresee them in, like, the championship game. Not the Super Bowl, but the AFC championship game. Mm-hmm. And – based off of this trade because they have Mixon in there, even though Mixon is not the same Mixon that, that he used to be. But based off the offense that they're going to be running, he can still be – he can still produce in that offense. I, yeah, whenever I do, I do talk, agree with that. 
And whenever we was talking about who's the number one, the reason why I said Stefan Dix is not the number one is because of what he's coming into. Like Nico already showed that like he can do it all. Uh, Tank Dell did the same thing. We will see what ends up happening we will see. in this in this training camp and everything. And it will really come down to they might have two number ones. Or one, one A and then, and then like one B. Because technically Tank Dell, if he comes back like, like he was last year, he's their deep threat. He what did he tear? Um I don't know. That's a good question. Go ahead. I'll look at what you're still talking. But I personally think that um, Nico is probably going to take because what we did say last year, Nico did bolt up, uh, up in that um, offense with um, D'Amico Ryan and everything. So I think Nico is going to be the number one still, and and Diggs is is just going to come in and then play his role because he is getting up there in age. He might be that con, con- possession receiver. But he still has that name pedigree. So that's the reason, like, and then, so it's really going to see what routes he's going to be taking away from Nico and how they're going to get him involved. But it, we will see within, like, the first eight games who it is. And the reason why I yeah. said eight games is because that gives enough range to see what Stefan Diggs is, is up in the system. But then also mm-hmm. if he's going to be that diva like he was in the past three um, in Minnesota and then Buffalo, and then see if he's gonna bring that same diva to him up in Houston. Uh, so Tank Tory towards his fibula. Uh, yeah, he fractured fibula, which is oh, something is his leg, right? So he tore his leg. Um, so is is so you said Tank 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 the Tank Dale's the deep threat? Well, no, yeah, the muscle. Tank the, yeah. It's the deep threat. Yeah. Stephon Dale is not really a deep threat. He can go, he can get deep and get loose and get deep, but he's not a deep threat. Um, and so you saying that what's his name is the is the possession guy, um, uh, Nico. I think Nico I'm is asking. more of that intermediate route uh type of uh wide receiver. I think Stefan Diggs is going to come in and play that possession receiver for him, be that blanket guy for for um, CJ. Okay, so I mean, so he's going to get targets. I mean, so I think he's, he's like, I think he's like he's, thirty six. We looking for Stefan Diggs. Thirty eight yeah. for Stefan Diggs. I'm saying. I think it's going to yeah. come down to. I think he's Stefan Diggs is going to be in that Adam Thielen role that he was in whenever he was up in Minnesota. I mean, that's fair. There, there was both put up like 900 each. Um, so that's why I, I said mean, like I, they're going to complimentary, like they're going to compliment each other because in order for him to actually get the ball, physically, Diggs, I need you to do your job too. Like if it's like, hey, I need you just to clear out over the middle so I can get this this dig coming from, from the backside that that's actually Nico's going to end up doing, then – I need you just to clear it out, but we'll see if he's going to end up doing that. So I, a couple things. I think Stefan will be on his best behavior, right? First thing, because he's trying. I know a contract, right? He's going to be on his best behavior. He don't want to stick up the joint. Don't want to. Don't want to have his name attached to him being a diva receiver and a problem receiver. Also, with the whole him and Josh, him and in Buffalo. When when they lost the AFC Championship, right? And Stephon Diggs was out there looking at Kansas City. You know, he was like, "Okay, okay, right." And ever since then, they got worse and worse and worse. I think Stephon Diggs is just one. He wants to win, and so he's like a a net on Josh Allen because Josh Allen, you the quarterback, man. I need you to I need you to stop fucking up, stop playing hero ball. You know what I'm saying? Stop playing hero ball and. Make the right, make the right decisions. But Josh don't have that 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 OC in his ear. Day ball that he had, right? Because Day ball left after they went to the AFC Championship. So I saw an article last week that somebody dropped. You remember the first game when they played the Jets, right? So Aaron Rodgers tears Achilles, and yep. they still lose to the Jets. Why? 
because Josh Allen threw three interceptions. And so apparently Josh Allen snapped on Stephon Diggs in the locker room. He was like, it's just one effing game. And I, I'd already know Stephon Diggs was like, no, bro, it's not just one game. This yes, it's one game, but you yeah, but you, you, you from that championship. Exactly. You can build off this one game and go and go the wrong way. I need you to build off this one game and go the right way. You going the wrong way, throwing three interceptions, bro. That's why we lost this game because you turned the ball over. And so I think Stephon Diggs just wants to win. And you know, I think I think he's getting a little bit of a bad rap. I'll say that. A little bit of a bad rap. I mean, you know, because Josh, I see Josh playing hero ball. I see him doing too much. Now he's gonna do even more if he ain't got that that go-to guy. So, and your son was like, I think who's gonna benefit is Cook. And Dalton Kincaid is gonna benefit just by default. He's gonna benefit. Yeah. Um, because he trusts Dalton Kincaid. I was with him last year. They had a little report last year. I think that that's gonna grow. I'm curious to see who they draft in the first round as a receiver. Um and they, I don't think they're gonna move up. Um, they could they had the most picks in the draft one. But I don't know if they're gonna move up. I think they're gonna move up. Um, I can actually see them going after Brian Thomas. I can see that, but is he going to be there? How far are they moving up? They're going to have to move up to try to get him. I'm just thinking high. about like the three, because if you're looking at it like the three, like he's number four coming off the board. Yes, I agree. I agree. He's number four. Like I he's agree. not going to, so he's going to be up in the teens. Like if you just said that they have like the, the most picks, then what? Seeing them move up, like they did the exact same thing for uh, Josh Allen. Yeah, like, I, can, I can remember. They moved up. I thought they moved up for him. I can't remember. But um, but then it's also on Josh Allen as well to be that actual QB to actually lead the locker room. Like, is he going to be I that mean, guy? Which, which I think that's the reason why, like, one, I can't knock um, Buffalo for, like, doing what they did because I saw that they pretty much put all their eggs up in up in one basket. And they and they went all in with the, the whole Stephon Diggs and then their whole defense. And then oh, as yeah. we saw this year, like the whole defense just got depleted. Like injuries, yeah. I'm, Injury. Well, injuries, but I'm also talking about like during the offseason too. So like their whole like they had to let go of like five starters or something like that. Oh, like, right. Cause it was over a month. So, yeah. Yeah. So that's why I was like, they pushed, they pretty much pushed all the Ooh, all the chips ball. up in the middle. And with them pushing all their chips up in the middle, they didn't end up they ain't win that all in, dog. <laughs> For all y'all Texas holding people out there. They ain't they win. They ain't go. They ain't go. They ain't win with that all in. So they want the Rams, uh, right? <laughs> nah. So yeah, it's just gonna be another. We're, we're gonna see what's Buffalo gonna do. We'll see. Um, they gonna stick up this one, bro. I mean, yeah. they, I don't believe in McDermott. Just I'm put up. I don't believe in McDermott and 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 Josh Allen is too wild without without him having a good OC. So I don't. I'm I don't have high hopes for them. Do could they still win the East? And beat Miami this year. This is the year for Miami to 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 oh, win so. the NFC East. Yeah. To, so, give it up. so 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 since like I know we kind of uh, stayed up on this topic for like a little bit long longer than like what what we expected. But can you see them uh, trading Josh Allen away to get ready for uh, next year? Uh, uh, no, man, they ain't gonna be stupid now. Let's not be dumb. Let's not be dumb. Y'all can can't trade these big these big, big quarterback and these big contracts. Let's not that now that's stupid to me. Now hold on now. Let, don't, let's not get too crazy. Though. Hold up. Let's not get too crazy. Let's not put back who made us relevant. We ain't been relevant since Jim Kelly and the Thurman Thomas days in over almost 30 years. Let's not get crazy. Nah. nah that is that's not. No, nah, don't do that. That's, that's over. Okay, okay. Hey, I'm just I asking. I, yeah. I gotta play devil's advocate. But we're gonna get off that That's Josh crazy. Allen and then Stefan Diggs and everything. And see, there's yeah. another all summer. Another news out there is let's talk about this dag on Justin Jefferson dog. Oh Justin Jefferson. God. This dag on saga up in Minnesota. And it's really kind of interesting that everything is all playing tangent. Like 
Stephon Diggs came from Minnesota, and Justin Jefferson took over the uh, Stephon Diggs role. So, what's going on with Justin Jefferson? Um, excuse me, I'm about to. Excuse me. Oh well, me personally, I think he is trying to get out of uh, Minnesota because he can already foresee. Well, just look at him. Like, um, one, either he wants to win that bad, and then he's already foreseeing that Minnesota is not going to be able to get there up in like the next five years. So he's just trying to get out and just to get up on a team that that he know he can win with. Um. And sort of similar to like what we was talking about today earlier on up on like the messenger and everything. What team actually has the assets just to trade for him, but then also having the money up on the back end as well, just to pay him as well. Cause that's what a lot of people don't realize is that whenever all these diva wide receivers, running backs, quarterbacks, they get very disgruntled or even defensive players. If they don't feel like being up on their current team and they want to get paid, what is their actual capital? Like, what picks are they going to cover just to get you back up in return? But then on top of that, whatever picks you end up giving up for that player, do you already have a deal set in place for him just to be able to uh, sign there? Most likely that's what always is done ahead of time. Like we've seen that just recently, like teams making trades for players, which this off season was different. I've never seen that many uh, people traded up in up in one off season, but no, I haven't either. I'm gonna still. I'm, let, me, let me go back. Let me go back right quick to the Stephon Diggs thing and the Buffalo Bills. You talking about them moving up? I do think that. So let's say. So I think we all agree that it's maybe it's one, two, three. Harrison neighbor. I feel like the third receiver, wherever the third receiver is, could fall because I feel like the Giants take a receiver, the Cardinals take a receiver, and I don't think that the Chicago Bears will take a receiver. That's just me. The Falcons won't. So I think that third wide receiver could fall if nobody moves up to the Chargers spot to take a wide receiver. So I'll put that out there. We'll we talk about that later when we go to the draft. As far as J.J., I don't know, man. I mean, they, they offer him everything, the, the, the highest paid receiver. And he said, it's like it said today that he, I guess he want to wait until after the draft just to see what they're going to do in the draft. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're saying he's trying to leave, like they won't be good within the next five years. Well, that mean, it means to me, are they going wide? Are they, go, they go quarterback. You're still not happy with that. That's just a quarterback that he, that he likes um, or that he wants, right, in Minnesota. And he need to be careful what he wished for because he could go to a trash team. You know, like I would necessarily, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would want to go to Arizona, for an example. I, I don't know if I would, personally. So he needs to be careful what he wished for. I mean, Stephon Diggs, I don't know if he got blessed and got lucky. He went to the Buffalo Bills and then went to the Houston Texans. So he, he went to two playoff contenders. But, J.J., we could see him behind Carolina. You know, and they, they, they can't. But I'm just saying, like, to a team who's that trash, Whoa, you know, we, seen, you know, we can see you. I mean, I'm just saying. We can see you to – let me – I'm going to look at another bad team. We, we could see you yeah, to the Patriots. And, and, and Jacoby Brissett be throwing the ball to you. So you should have said the Titans or anything, but I would just look Carolina. Y'all had no one over our pick, so it was low hanging fruit. I just, you know, I mean, but you know what I'm saying? Like, so we could be careful what you wish for. So you had to the Patriots, new regime, but you got Jacoby Brissett throwing you, throwing you the ball. Unless we're going to draft the quarterback, you still start from scratch. At least you yeah. know Kevin O'Connell. At least you know you're going to eat in Kevin O'Connell's system. Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what he's doing, honestly. I don't know. Shoot, I wish I could see everybody's money. Oh, wait, never mind. I can't. Let me see. Um, da, 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 da. I don't know what he's doing, to be honest. This is that's shocking that he's acting like this, though. But yeah. so, malicious. So, what I'm seeing right now, I'm actually looking at the at the cap money um, for 2025. And there's a lot of money out there for up in the uh, for who? cap space. A, for who? A, a, lot of, a lot of teams. You got mm. the Patriots. Um, they have $205 million 
up in cap space. So, yeah, that was um, all right. Well, you also got to remember, like, they're pretty much their whole team is probably. Bro, the, the cap is, is only two thirds. I mean, they got twenty five million dollars on the contract. That don't sound efficient. Yeah, I'm looking at. Um, spot you sure you sure you, you sure they don't have twenty five million dollars and they they using up two hundred and five of cap out of two thirty? Mm-hmm. Big shot. Nope. That don't so even sound what right. they have right now, so their total cap for next year is only ninety nine million dollars. That's their okay. Total cap we get for. we get two hundred from them. Because that's the cap space. I'm guessing that over the cap is already applying. Because you, because you know, like whatever they don't use this year, that get, automatically gets pushed over to the actual cap next year. Okay, so, so you, like, okay, so like, next, so like if they don't use forty million, then they they get that whatever that cap space that they had next year on top of that forty million. Okay, so just, okay. that's no. why I said a lot of teams got. But like the top five teams that, that we're talking about, Minnesota is one of them already. So <laughs> the the uh, Chargers, then you have Washington, then you have Detroit. That's why I was about to be like, so what if Detroit was like, hey, if if you don't watch, I doubt they'll do that because that's an in robbery type of deal, right? But and they better have to pay. We are Ahmed Raw. They better pay somebody. They better pay Jerry Goff. Yep. And Amon Ra. So they're gonna be able to do that. But it's interesting. You said who the other team said the third team you said the Chargers now. See this answer the Chargers. The Chargers. They have, yep. Which is I don't know how they got money. They got money next year. They don't have money. They got money next year. Yep. And this is just and, and, and what I'm pretty much so I'll tell you like how many players they actually have signed to the to the contract as of right now. So the Patriots, if the season was to start today for 2025. They only have 26 players signed. So that's where all that money is showing you that, yeah, even though it says they have $205 million just, just to spend up in 2025, a lot of that's going to mm-hmm. get dealt during free agency. Like re-signing their, their same guy. So they might go into free agency with maybe like a hundred something million dollars, maybe. Mm-hmm. Depending on how good their actual um, GM is, but we'll see what's going to happen to uh, JJ we're gonna see after the draft. This, yeah, we're going to see his offseason. Yeah, we're going to see. Yep. going to sign or not? Yep, or well, he going to sit out? But I don't think it's is it is it is there any other news that you want? Oh, we're still looking about the CD Lamb talking. About he, he might hold out, which I, I can see him holding out, but I, I think that is going to play in. You know, that's yeah. gonna pay him. It's OTAs. I mean, it ain't training camp, it's OTAs. So not <laughs> yeah. a big deal. He she's trying to get paid, which they gonna pay him. Which they should. Like they it's should sort of like similar it. to to like what we were saying about um there's a different tiers in, in, in different players that are actually getting paid. Like my tier ones, just because he's he's a tier one, I I can see him still doing what he's doing right now. Yeah, like man. I don't, yeah, like I don't see him stepping, like taking a big step back, unless foreseeing something foreseeing comes out that. Knock on wood, I ain't gonna discuss it, but uh, we already know what can end up happening. It's football, but right, right, you know, I, right, so. he, he he's got that work ethic. I don't see to him, you know, uh, the your boy brought up, he brought up your son brought up Debo. Debo ain't really a wide receiver. That's first and foremost, and he stay hurt. Take it for most. Well, that's, Zeke, that's he brought up. That's first he brought up Zeke. He brought up Zeke, and after Zeke rookie year, he got worse. But he got worse and worse every year. So you saw the right on the wall every year, and like you said, he'll run it back. So that was, as I said, that was that was a terrible comparison. If you're gonna do a like comparison, to. this is my comparison right here. What is what is Justin Jefferson has done already? What has uh, Jamar Chase has done already? What has That's Tyreek what Hill has done already? Like, do I need to keep Tyreek going? Hill. Do I need to keep going at like all these top wide receivers that are actually in the same realm as him? That's like, what you we can him to. Exactly. We can even compare him to his old dag on uh, teammate um, Amari Cooper. What what has Amari Cooper done? Like, he still has produced, but he might not have there. been producing like how he was in in Dallas. 
but he's actually still producing. Still producing. So there's nothing I see from him that says he don't he don't fall off no. or slow down. He ain't in his prime yet. So nope. But let's go on and get let's to get this to next it. segment. Let's get to the nice. I'm talking about the meat and potatoes of this episode. Man, we know what time it is, everybody. We know it is draft season coming on. So I know everybody's out there up in thinking about like, oh, which rookies are coming out. Definitely in this episode, we're going to go, we're going to give you some guys who we think you should be looking at at the quarterbacks and then at the running backs. And excuse me. Currently, right now, I will let uh, Mr. K Camp start it off um, with his quarterback. So, what we're going to end up doing, everybody, we're going to do like a little bouncing off. Uh, he's going to give his players who we think um, you should actually be um, paying attention to up in the draft and seeing if you would actually want to draft this player um, uh, to your team. Personally, some of these guys that, that we'll be mentioning. You might want to draft them, just have them on your team because they will be producing. So, we'll just knock it off. Go and do your thing, Mr. K Camp. All right. We are with this whole show is going to be 30 minutes. We are already 31 minutes in. So, I'm going to kind of fly through these just a little bit. Uh, my first quarterback that I would like to highlight is JJ McCarthy. You know who he is. He's like 23. And he's 6'2, 219. He's 21 years old. He turned 22 next January, so he's he's young, three-year um, guy in Michigan. Obviously, he won a championship. Uh, he didn't do that much at the combine. Um, his three cone was 6.82, which is pretty good. He's pretty athletic. Uh, his three cone was six six point eight two. Uh, anything under seven three cone is pretty good. I mean, Roma Duze was a 6.88, so let you know anything how athletic JJ McCarthy is. Um, his shuttle was 4.23. So I think the biggest knock on, on JJ is no one knows he wouldn't ask to do much, right? Jim Harbaugh's system, they run the ball, they run the ball, they throw. Um, he has some good moments. He has good mechanics. His feet is always under him. Um, mm -hmm. So he's fundamentally sound. So he's the athletic, athletic kid. He's fundamentally sound. He's young. Um, I like him personally. Like I said, his big issue is Michigan didn't ask for him to do much. I saw that drive. Who they play in the semifinals? They played somebody. I mean, I can't think of who they played. They played um, Alabama. Was it Alabama? Was yeah, that Alabama. So. They Alabama. There was a drive at the end of the game that they had to have a touchdown, and he drove them down that field. They run the, they ran the ball pretty good with Corum too, but he drove them down that field. I just think he's. I think he slept on. Now, would I take him? Would I take him over over Caleb? Probably not. We'll take him over Jaden Daniels, probably not. Drake May, the more and more I hear about people, you know, um, analyzing Drake May, the more and more I see him getting shitted on. So I'm like, whoa, is this something I'm missing on Drake May? I hadn't really scouted him that much. Mm -hmm. um, but I like J.J. McCarthy. Um, he's a fundamentally, fundamentally sound quarterback. So I think that he could be a game manager at the very least. I think if you put him on the Minnesota Vikings with J.J., I think he can thrive. I think he can thrive um, in that system with Kevin O'Connell. So I can think that we're sort of fighting to stay at 11 and let him fall to 11. Because I think that Caleb, Jane Daniels, I don't know what the Patriots going to do. And then I think he might be able to fall to 11. I, can't, I don't know if I see Denver shooting up to try to get him. And I'll try to be quick as I could on JJ. McCarthy. Your thoughts on JJ, real quick. Um, I think JJ McCarthy is going to do what he needs to do when he gets to the NFL. Um, I just hope and pray that he's actually going to a team that's going to let him develop a little bit. Um, yes, some type of uh, some type of veteran presence there just to show him the routes. Which, yeah, if he does that go to Minnesota, that does that would be okay because then they got Sam Darnold. Um. The only thing that like really makes me think about JJ McCarthy is that whatever team he goes to, will he get that opportunity just just to sit behind them? But then, will that same team want to draft one of these quarterbacks that are coming out in next year's draft? 
So you can't, no, 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 don't do, I mean, well, obviously it depends on where you're taking him, but don't do that. Don't, don't, don't ruin him like that. Take him in the, take him in the first round and you let him sit behind, hell, even if it's Kirk Cousins in Atlanta, you let him, his ass sit behind Kirk Cousins in Atlanta, which they got him in eight. But don't, don't draft somebody next year. Don't do that. Don't do that to him, man. They give him a chance. Let him develop. I, I, I think his arm is pretty good at the, at, at, at the pro day. He has a, yeah. he has a pretty good arm. So he's athletic, solid. Yeah, I think I, I want to see where a lot of people go. That's me. I, I, I just see where people go. And then I can make my full judgment then. But I like JJ, though. So you like JJ. Yeah, like it's going to be interesting, Mike. So since you like him, um, if you was to draft him, where would you draft him? Like, would you so take him? Super, is this one quarterback league? Let's just do let's just do matters. super flex only because let's just do super flex only because we know that in in the one QB leagues the dude probably ain't going to like the third round probably. Right. Super flex. So, I'm thinking. I'm thinking Caleb. I'm thinking Jaden. So I, I, obviously I'm assuming Chicago's taking Caleb. I'm just picking Jaden. Three. Let's just say for shits and giggles. So who who's drafting it? See, it, it depends on who drafted him. Who's drafting him? He's not. I'll say this. He's not going before. Those top two quarterbacks, those three wide receivers, and Brock Bowers. So that puts him at two, five, six. That puts him at seven, right? Puts him at seven. Mm -hmm. Super flex, I'm not drafting him before seven. After seven, hey. Would you take think, him over? That's the thing. Like, would you take Drake May over him, or would you take uh, Brian it, Thomas Jr.? It depends on where they go. I just, I start. Yeah. It depends on where they go. If, if he goes to Minnesota, I'll take him at seven. If he goes yeah. to Atlanta, uh, I think he'll fall because then, then Kirk is going to play for two years because he got paid for yeah. two years. Uh, if he goes to the Patriots, I might not. Yeah, I don't. I can't take him. Exactly. Because it depends, like, again, it depends on where he goes. I'm not high on the Patriots. They have no skill position players that are up to par. So ugh. I'm trying to think who else needs a quarterback that could be viable. Who else needs a quarterback that could be viable, Christian? That I was Oakland. like, okay, I'll take Oakland. The Raiders. Would I take him at seven in Oakland and Drake May goes to the Patriots? Or do I roll the dice on Brian Thomas Jr. if Brian Thomas Jr. goes to the mm – -hmm. Um, because I had I had Brian Thomas going to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I might take Brian Thomas Jr. over over him and push him down. Depends on where they go. Uh, but I, so if, so if he goes to the to the Vikings, I would slide him probably set. And if Drake okay. goes to the Cardinals, I buy, I'm oh I put if Drake makes sorry goes to the Patriots, I'll take him over over Drake May. Okay. I like Kevin O'Connell. So, so a nice segue into so you brought up uh JJ McCarthy and then you've been talking about Drake May. So that's oh, the one guy who I that's who I'm bringing up to the to the podium uh, to, to the podium and everything and personally like Tell everybody me. Everybody has here. been pretty much shitting on Drake May, and then it's actually yeah. kind of interesting. Like people kept, and like those are really the, the actual. That makes me think and actually go back and be like, all right, so what are people seeing that like I'm not seeing with this okay. with this quarterback? Okay. And the thing about it is, that's actually quite interesting. Is that okay? Maybe some teams don't like him because he went to he played for a Chapel Hill. So we had that whole Mitchell Tr Trubisky blown over his head so maybe people are saying like all right well he went to Chapel, so he probably has that same pedigree as him but the thing about it is that with drake may do i think he should be a top three quarterback no oh but i think i think that the only reason i'm saying that is because i think he needs to actually sit behind a veteran just to actually understand the actual pro game like he mm. came out thinking that okay he's good to go like can he be good? Yes. Like, as long as you build an actual team around him to help him with his falls, but then you have to actually have that QB just – or that, that QB coach just to help him out. If he goes to mm -hmm. up in the Patriots system, 
is that good? I think that's a good place for him because what they really? end up doing is you got to realize like it's a new regime. They don't have Bill Bill Belichick there anymore. Gerard Mayo is there. They already done brought back J- Jacoby Brissett, and Gerard Mayo has already done said that I don't mind starting J- J- Jacoby Brissett for the whole year. And like if he does that just to have his rookie QB learn, that's fine because that's what Jacoby is there for. He's not there to be your five-time starter for like the uh, next five years. He's just there to be that bridge quarterback just to help out whatever rookie they end up getting. And that person who I think they can end up getting would be Drake May. But we will see, even though we'll see what he can end up doing. Like Because personally, I wouldn't draft him that high, but I can still see him going that high. But let's say he did go top three. Where would Mm -hmm. I draft him? I would draft him uh, ahead of um, up, up in Superflex. The only reason why we're doing Superflex, everybody, is because that's when QBs matter. Anybody out yep. there up in Super QB leagues, quarterbacks really don't matter like that. You can get a quarterback in the second round, third round. Let your mm-hmm. friends draft a daggone quarterback up in the first round. It's not like you can't get another QB unless your guy is running and doing like Jaden Daniels running all the time and he's going to get you some points, which, aha, Drake May can actually run. He is a dual threat quarterback, sort of, sort of similar to Justin Herbert. He can run if he wants to, yeah, but exactly. he doesn't have to. So he he has that up in his. Uh, he's one of those QBs that he can run if he wants to, but he's not like a Josh Allen where they're going to physically run him through a brick wall and see if he can put a dent up in that brick wall. So Correct. Drake May. Some of the good things about Drake May that I have seen. Um, he is good in the pocket like he's a he's an, an exceptional uh dual threat Q- qb with the quickness and speed effective scrambling and then design runs like it's just a guy that i can see fitting that patriots offense that they are trying to build right now and then just letting them sit back and actually have that actual tutelage behind jacoby Brissett. so Personally, there's a lot more. Like a lot of people have already said that what can you see in – could Drake may be the C.J. Stroud this year? Just sitting back and then getting – if they built a system around him, can he do what he's supposed to do? We will see. Whoever ends up drafting Drake may, they will be getting a talented rookie, but they need to make sure that they have the pieces – put in place around him just to get this kid to the next level. Uh, so so what, I, don't, I, only have a, I only have a few things on Drake, man. I have a strong arm, good athlete. He's a red sophomore. He's going to turn 22 mm-hmm. until August. I have, he can make every throw. Uh, his negatives, he can have a, he can have lazy footwork that leads to bad throws and his delivery is kind of long. He has a high floor, and then I have – he has the ability to be the best quarterback from an NFL perspective. Not fantasy, but from an NFL perspective, he has the ability to be the best quarterback in this draft. Um, Him sitting there with the Patriots, I just need to see their skill position. Do they got – are they going to get somebody in the second round? They came in three. Are they going to get somebody in the second round, high second round, to help him out? Because he – every quarterback needs help. And then I think that's the reason why the Patriots are unlike a lot of people's like, well, like Patriots, they don't even know who they're actually going to be taking at that on pick uh, three. They don't. They don't. And then the reason I think they know who they're going to take. They just want somebody just to come up and actually trade for that uh, pick three. Because if, if you actually think about it, like Caleb Williams is going number one and Washington mm-hmm. is getting their actual QB. Mm-hmm. Like, I it's either going to be Daniels. May or, or or like JT Daniels. Those are going to be the two, and most likely it's going to be JT uh, JD. Mm-hmm. So, since it's going to be one of those two, the actual draft starts at one point oh three. So, if I'm the Patriots, why wouldn't I say, um, if you were trying to move up, like this is what it's going to cost, and like this is what it's going to take, because it makes me think that somebody, a la the, who was it, um. Minnesota probably has already called them to see like what they're trying to give up. Yeah, maybe they said they're going to give up pick 11 and then pick like 23, something like that. 
But then what else are, are they giving up on top of that just to get their QB that they want, just to fall back? But then it's like, does Minnesota, uh, do the Patriots physically want to fall back to pick a level? Right. Uh, and like, are they, so that's the reason why I said that whenever they made that, whenever they pushed out that, those articles or like those leaks, quotation marks, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. did they really physically want to do that? They just want to have somebody come up and actually buy the pick. Just to say, like, all right, this is what it's going to take. I don't mean that it's, that's what it's going to take. I'm just telling you that right now. It actually might just take less than that just to get up there. They, I mean, I saw Arthur said three first, not enough. So, yeah, oh, I don't know. But if they want Drake May and they're trying to move back, to me, that don't make any sense to me. That's to just think, unless, like you said, they're trying to put it out there to shit on Drake May so he can fall. But, uh, but they, but they don't know who Minnesota won. Minnesota might be like, I'm on Drake May, and then snap and then snipe him. You trade him and they took your quarterback. Because I don't think they need to move up to get J.J. McCarthy or a Michael Penix if that's who Minnesota wants. Me personally, nah. I don't think so. Let them fall to year 11 and keep what you got. Personally. Yep. Uh, okay. Is that me? Next quarterback? Yep. Uh, so, speaking of Michael Penix, <coughs> Michael Penix is my second quarterback. Bless you. Michael Penix, 6'2", 216. Um, he turned 24 in May. So Michael Penix, he has a little bit of injury history, right? He's a lot of injury history, right? Injury history, tore his right, he tore his right ACL twice. His Megal came back clean. I didn't see much of Michael Penix this year, but I know that boy can spin the he, he can spin that ball. Um He's a great thrower of football, effortless, effortless thrower. He has elite arm talent. Um, his he was 99th percentile in getting sacked. Now, having said that, he did have the best rated offensive line in the nation, and he did play in the pack with. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, when everything is perfect. He looks perfect. He can put that ball through a fucking pinhole. He can put it through a fucking picket fence, right? But of course, the NFL, everything is not perfect. Um, he, he's even, <laughs> I got this, he's even, he's, he throws more efficiently on outrates, which is crazy. You don't really see that much, especially from a, from a college quarterback. And he's more athletic than you think. I don't, the reason he didn't move that much in college, I don't know if that was just, um, your boy's offense, or he was just being yeah. right designed that way, or he was just being tender because he didn't want to get, get didn't want to get hurt because he's been riddled with injuries. But he's more athletic than you think. I saw a little bit of him at his pro day running, running without a brace, throwing without a brace. So he's athletic now. Um, but when the pocket is set and he can set his feet, he can make every throw in the book. I mean, I I come up to Jerry Goff, you know. Um, when everything is perfect, of course, it's, it's not like in the field, but when everything is perfect, he can be perfect. Um, so that's yeah. it. I think that's it. So when pressure, you can't get sloppy. But so can anybody, right? And yeah. so, yeah, I have Michael Penix. I, like I said, if whoever goes to Minnesota and they keep Justin, and they pay this to Justin Jefferson and they got Addison, that's who I'm going to ride with. And I would love to see Michael Penix there with him, him or JJ, him or JJ McCarthy. Yeah, I really like uh, Michael Penix Jr. Also, as well. Like, I think um, he's going to do. Depends on like similar like to like what you're saying. Um, depends you on what he does, like where he goes. The one thing I will say about Michael Penix Jr. is do not sleep on the Seattle Seahawks in trading up to actually oh. him. Yes, because of the OC, right? The OC that, that he just left. Yep. And I don't know if you saw, like, they physically flew out the whole coaching staff to the, oh, did um, they? His pro all day? the whole coach to, to his pro day. Everybody went up to watch. Them. Yep. So I would I not need... be shocked. So. so Hey, I'm just saying, like, that's like a little nugget sprinkled in right then and there because um, I forgot to mention I that think too, for a fact that I wouldn't – maybe 
and I'm saying that this is probably going to be – this probably won't happen, but maybe, like, maybe you see the Bears trade back to 16 just because the Seahawks want to trade up just to get Michael Finney because he knows that Minnesota, if they didn't trade up, that, that they're going to want a quarterback. Um, if the Raiders they, – if they want a quarterback at 13, then they'll have to trade up just to get him. But – do not sleep on Michael Penix going to Seattle because be what so what I've seen him is like he's really accurate, very accurate. Like his accuracy is like off the charts. Oh, yeah. Like oh, we yeah. already talked about this it? before. Like I think it's gonna be good, especially if he goes to what, has Tyler Lockett, Dag on Jags in, and Dag on um, DK Metcalf, and then the Dag on running backs behind him too. Man, I don't know how good their O line is. Um, and he can sit for a year behind Gino. Like, whoa, I love that for him. I love it as the JSN because I'm a little iffy on JSN. I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to figure out what to do with him. He went to a bad situation. I think he could be on my raw. But the fact yep. that fucking OC was trash and is trash, who oh got he left. Who's he with now? He left and went somewhere else. The OC for um, Seattle last year. She yeah, I, I can't remember. So, man, I would love that. I would love that, Christian. So, yes, Michael Penix. Who's your – um? I'll uh, my next who, person who's, is who's uh, my number two. Uh, and then the guy who you're talking about, no, that's – Lisa, that's a new guy. Um, I, Brian I, I'll figure it out. But, oh, but that's from the Washington guy. Like, that's what we talked about already. But um, my next person is Mr. Jaden Daniels. Had to bring him up to the forefront. Like, we already know what he's done. Like, sort of like played that role up in Arizona where he just transferred from Arizona State to LSU. This first year, he wasn't the uh, Jaden Daniels that he was this year, but he did have some He did have some guys slinging the ball out there with him. Like, uh, he clinched the Heisman Trophy, multiple accolades, throwing for 3,800 yards on, like, 40 touchdowns, along with another 1,100 yards up on the ground and then 10 touchdowns. Good accolades for him, which we already know what he's going to bring to the level when he comes to the NFL. It's kind of slender a little bit, like, but personally, Jaden Daniels is, um, he has all the accolades just to be that guy in the NFL, especially just similar like what I said about Drake May having the team built around him perfectly, him going to, to the commanders, is that a good situation? Yes, um, because we see what the commanders are trying to do. And we know that is Bill O'Brien. Bill, no, it's not Bill O'Brien. Um, what's his name? What's the new head coach for the uh, – Oh, not Chris I, like, I see his face. What's his head, Dan what's Quinn. head coach? Name? Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn. I'm sorry. Yeah. Dan Quinn. And we already know how Dan Quinn wants his quarterbacks to be. Just get the ball out, like, and then do your job. Like, they have – like, he already has a defense behind him that he's going to have set in place. So, um, Jaden Daniels, it's like some of the things that I see, he's proficient uh, pocket maneuvering, um, effortless, evading pressure with, with keen vision. Like, he can run a 4-5 of up in his 40. That's good of the NFL because that's just the type of runner that he's going to be. Hopefully, they have an actual offensive line around him. Ooh. Uh, very, mm-hmm. very mm-hmm. impressive. Uh, our strength uh, targets to all three levels with with a quick release, and that's what you need up in the NFL. So, that's one thing that we're looking at with Mr. Jaden Daniels. I personally think if we're doing a super flex, He's probably like the number four or five guy off the board, only because of Super what we're trying to. See. Yeah, four or five. Because I'm thinking, like, all right, me personally, the first one's going to be, you're going to have off gate. You're having um, what whatever big three you want. If that number one overall pick, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going, that's probably where he's going. And then at pick 1.02, you might have um, Caleb Williams, and then the next two selections will end up being one of the one of the two wide receivers and then Jaden Daniel. So you're saying in a super flex you would not take Jaden Daniel. You would not take Caleb and Jaden one and two. No. Where the quarterback is more important. Really? You probably one of the first people I've heard uh, heard say that in a super flex. 
Interesting. No, Go ahead. I wouldn't take them one and two. Okay. Because I can get somebody else up in the back half that, like, if I know Drake May can do, so I can get him, like, a couple picks later on, like, if, depending on what I have coming up. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. But what about your last um, quarterback that you have up on the board? Uh, I'm going to say a couple a couple more things about Jaden. I'm a, I'm a fan of Jaden Daniels. That one thing, one great thing about him, um, he has good deep accuracy, but he has, a, he has a natural throw of his hips. Like, he didn't have to have that much torque when he's throwing the ball like, uh, like uh, Baker Mayfield. So Baker Mayfield, yep. he can throw it far, but he, he has a lot of torque in his hips. He's a apparently Jane Daniels can, can, can just throw that pill without having to flick his hips, his hips like that. So, yep. that's impressive. That's impressive for that. Uh, okay. my last person, I don't have that much. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't have that much on this guy. Um, is Spencer Rattler. Big Spencer Rattler, he was the number one quarterback coming out of high school. You know, he had that, that video on Netflix, quarterback, where he was cocky. I think he humbled himself. Um, he did lose his starting spot to <laughs> number one overall. Number one quarterback is coming out this year, Kelly Williams, Oklahoma. He transferred to South Carolina. Um, from what I hear, he, his maturity has gotten better. He was young. He's 18, 17, feeling himself. You know how it go. You know, yep. so everybody's kissing his ass. Um, he's six foot two, seven. He turned 24 in September. He ran a 4.95. Um, his three cone was 7.2, shuttle was 4.3, 4.23. Oh, I'm sorry, 4.3. And a 32 inch bird in his in his broad jump, like 108 inches. Um, he had a real good senior bowl. One thing about him, um, he does read his first read a lot and he doesn't wow you, right? He's not gonna wow you, right? But I think if he goes to a place, let's say I don't think he won't go this high, obviously. But let's say he goes to the Denver Broncos, right? I don't know who's throwing. I don't. I don't know who is their quarterback. Who's gonna be their quarterback? Surely they're not going with, with Jerry Stidham. But it's a flip a coin, right? If they pick Spencer around like in the third or fourth round, he might have a pass to start, right? You know what I'm saying? So depending on where he goes, or depending on where or how you should take him, yeah. So they go to Denver Broncos like third or fourth round. I see him as the third or fourth round pick, and you see a good path for him to start, possibly start. I think he could be pretty good for you um, as a as your quarterback. I would get him maybe in the taxi league, put him on your practice squad if he goes to a pretty good spot. Yeah. Yeah, I totally – I can see that. Spencer Rattler has the uh, tangibles to be a good QB in the NFL. I just think it's just similar to, like, what everybody says about all quarterbacks. It's just are they going to go to the right situation? Like, pretty much, are they going to have that veteran there that's going to be able to help mm -hmm. them in the need whenever they actually need to be there and not be, like, a prick? Like, where now some of these bets are going to be like, hey, I'm not helping this guy and work you out because he's, he's going to try to take my job. Right. We're going to see what's going to end up happening with all that. I think he's just going to be able to do what he needs to do. Um, it's just who Spencer Rattler is, so similar to like what you were saying. Like, is the guy's just – like, some of the teams that I can see him going to, maybe, like, what are your thoughts about him going to, like, to the Giants maybe? Like, maybe up in the later rounds – to battle against um, Daniel Jones, Dayball's if, there. If Dayball like gets him, I, I, I believe in Dayball. So if he gets him and can tutor him and, and get him some tutelage, I'm going to ride with Dayball, especially if they get a, a, a top quarterback at six. Okay. Or you mean top wide receiver? Yeah, sorry, top wide receiver, right, at six. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Prince Prince Riley is going to be good. And then for the guy that I got to bring up, I got to go back to one of my favorite teams up in college football. Got to go to the Florida State Seminoles and Mr. Jordan Travis. I don't think like I need to scout him. personally, Mr. Jordan Travis, I think he probably would be higher in people's drafts because if he did not get injured, but with his injury and everything. Um, can I see him being a starter in this league? Yes, per se. Like, real, like, I can see him 
playing that um, sort of like that that Geno Smith type of role. Like if you give him like he might be a backup for like a couple of years. I'm not talking about Geno, the guy who, for the Jets who got drafted to them. He didn't do his thing, but just if Jordan Travis can actually physically get behind a good veteran and actually learn, I can see him competing and actually eventually taking that spot, sort of similar to like what Kirk Cousins did with um, Robert Griffin the third. I can see that situation happening to him. So I wouldn't be shocked if we see Jordan Travis, even though, yes, he did end up getting hurt. Um, and then he's still nursing that, that injury, which is probably going to drop him down. Um, he's exceptional um, improvisation under pressure with uh, composure and vision, like strong running threat, like dual threat, calm, uh, cool demeanor up in the pocket. Like I sent you like a little highlight of him. Might have to put that up and up into the video, which like when he was under duress against Florida, oh, I saw that. I dude had like you really thought he was about to get sacked, but then he ended up scoring a touchdown based off of that, like the pocket uh, collapsing and everything. But um, some of the things, like some of the QBs that I can compare him to, like these are not guys that are these these are like your your journeyman quarterbacks. I need you for like a week or two. And then I'm just going to do your thing. Example, um, Colt McCoy. Like, Colt McCoy mm-hmm. has been a starter up in the league. Case Keenum has been a starter up, up in the league. So he'll get his shot, but it might not be right away. But I just think Jordan, Jordan Travis is a guy that people should actually look at. And in the next segment, do you have I, do you have anything about Jordan Travis? I don't know. I don't have much about Jordan Chavez. He's what six feet. He's pretty fast, <laughs> right? He's probably like part of a four, five, four, six, something like that before his yeah. injury. Uh, so uh, he didn't have a big arm, decent arm. Uh, I mean, he did lead Florida State to an undefeated season. So uh, yeah. yeah, I don't have much on him. You know, it depends on where he's drafted. You see him getting drafted like a, what fifth round, sixth round, something like that. Yeah, that's what I think. Will he get Will he get drafted? Yeah, I think he'll get drafted, and then he'll just be sit like they'll just put him um, just having to sit behind a veteran and just a nurse and everything. But that's pretty much what all the coaches are doing now is seeing like, all right, how severe was that injury? Is he gonna be able to come back? Things like that could end up being like a Brock Purdy per se type of deal where he's drafted in the seventh round and just saying, hey, I just want you to sit behind these guys. Do I think you're gonna make the team? No. But we'll see what we'll see what's going to end up happening. You never know. You never know. So yeah, in the area about Travis. in the area where everybody is coveting, we are going to jump to the running backs. I'm going to try to speed this up because we're already yeah, an hour. hour. <laughs> hour. Yeah. So we're okay. going to try to speed it up just so you can. Um, understand like some of the guys who we think you should be taking um a la i will let you go first again mr uh mr k camp okay um so we know the running back we know the running back position this year is not that great this year right there's no studs there's no b john robinson there's no there's no um digs that gibbs or digs gibbs there is no Brees hall in this draft there are also decent running backs who can, if they land on a good in a good position and a good team, can have a spot to possibly lead uh, um, to be a featured back. I want to see about maybe two, maybe three. They could be a long term starter. Be advised, there are studs coming out next year, so that are better than probably all of these running backs. Yeah, they are better than all these running backs. So be mindful of that. Now, before we get, okay, my first person is easy person, low hanging fruit. We're going to go with Trey Benson. Um, he ran a 4.39. He's six foot, two feet, 216. You would think he reminds you of Brees Hall. Hold up. <laughs> uh, but a 4.39, six foot, 216. His RAS score was 9.77. He had a, he had a split of one, 1.52 on a 33.5 vert. Be at a broad jump of 10.2, which is pretty good. So those those stats, they scream like, oh wow, you know, they scream Brees Hall. Let, let's pump the brakes a little bit. So <laughs> um some negatives on Trey Benson. He runs upright, which means he's probably easily tackled, right? Um, he will have a lot of negative runs. He needs to improve his processing. Um, 
from what I'm re what I looked at and what I heard also. Oh, what is one straight? I'm sorry about that. I heard that all in there. I don't know if you're or not. Um, what I what I heard and what I saw, he has the worst this worst vision in the class. Um, he's sometimes he's too decisive and then sometimes he's too patient. Um, he does have pretty good hands. Uh, he's more of a screen pass, swing pass type player, not, not a real big route, route runner. Um, he had four years in college, but he didn't turn 22 until July. He has pretty good feet, um, but he plays fast. But sometimes he plays faster than he processes at times. He's explosive. He has pretty good court contact balance, and he's the north and south runner. I did what I did find out that as a freshman at Oregon, he tore his ACL, MCL, lateral, and um lateral and his other meniscus and he tore his hamstring now that was in 2020 obviously we seen he's back from that so we shouldn't have to worry about that that was a gruesome injury um he did lack the volume in college i didn't like that i think he only had 156 carries um he, he doesn't have the fluidity in his hips like i said he's more of a north and south runner one cut runner and he lacks the lateral agility but a lot, of, a lot of people have him probably number one on their running back list. He's not in mine, but he is one of my on my top five running backs coming up this year. Trey Benson. Yep. Okay. Uh, just Florida State guy. Big on, on Mr. Trey Benson. Um, sure. Personally, I think um, now we're actually going to transition back to uh, one QB league. I think he will be the first running back taken off the board up in one quarterback, um, like one QB leads, mm -hmm. um, personally. Um, it's just because I don't think a lot of people are going to um, segue into this next guy, too, as well. Um, Before you move on, is he your is he your number one quarterback? I, is, he your number, is he your number one one running back? Yeah. Yeah. He is? You know, he's, okay. he's, so he's my not number mine. one only. He's my number okay. one only because the guy that's supposed to be the number one guy is actually hurt. But, uh, um, personally. Duncan Brooks. Yep, that's why I said I'm the second way into and uh Mr. Jonathan Brooks. Um so just like since we brought him up, Mr. Jonathan Brooks, uh one of the in his true freshman year for Texas in twenty twenty one. Um he made an impact uh with twenty one carries for like hundred and forty three yards and like a touchdown. Yes, yeah, slightly, but then you also gotta know who he was behind. He had right. B. John Ryerson. He also had Another Rashawn. Rashawn Johnson. So he's behind all these good running backs. So when he did get the chance just to actually shine, he was able to shine in the league. But then he had the gruesome injury. But the one thing that the people might not know out there, the guy that actually ended up doing his surgery is the um, surgeon for the Dallas Cowboys. So um, just be on the mindful, like, if he does get selected by Dallas, probably because they already know some insider information since he's physically been the guy. Um, the thing about him, he's very agile, quick foot work. Only thing we got to think about is with Mr. Jonathan Brooks is that is he going to have that same quick foot work whenever he comes back from the actual injury? So that's one thing that we're going to have to look at. Will he actually be able to sit behind some of the veteran presence? And I don't know, like, um, I'm really not too too familiar with uh, Dallas Cowboys like that. So even though a lot of mm -hmm. people are like America's team, I don't know physically if they have re-signed um, Zeke back. I know I saw it up in the – where they was talking about trying to re-sign him, but I don't no, know it's if not they official yet. Them. It's not official. So if they do re-sign, that's, that's probably okay just to have him sit behind a guy like that. But – with him being like he has clean hands, uh, expanse catch mm -hmm. radius, uh, for, for like the actual receiving game. So that's one thing you can look forward to in Mr. Jonathan Brooks. Um, only thing is just he, you don't know what's going to happen like after that injury. So he's a big risk. I see like a big risk slash reward if you are one of those contenders or out there that actually have preferable up picks and you can actually take a guy and just keep him up on your bench. And then don't expect for him to play like like the first two years. Oh wow, two wow. years. I only said two years on because like he's gonna be like him, him coming off the injury. He ain't gonna play the first year really. He'll probably gonna get his feet wet. Oh. 
I don't think he's gonna play this year. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's gonna play this year. I, from what I heard, it was a clean break. It was a clean mm-hmm. break in his knee. So that that's comforting, right? Um, yeah. So I think he's gonna play this year. I, like I said, I'm curious to see who takes him and if he gets the draft capital, right? He goes he goes day two, which he should go, I think, in round two or three. And to the Cowboys. He, he's saying he's he gonna be ready by training camp. Of course, what he's saying, of course, everybody's ahead of schedule, right? Everybody's ahead of schedule, yeah. ready by training but, camp. We're gonna see. I want to see if he has a brace on. I want to see that. Mm-hmm. I, but it's yeah. but it's also like people also as well as like yeah, um, he's gonna be ready by training camp. But it's the 21st century. Like they got things out there that like we don't even we, we can't even get our hands on. Right. So. so can he be ready? Yeah, probably. We'll see. He gonna be we'll see what he's going to end up doing. How fast do you think he is? Because because uh, because I hate that we'll never see how fast he really is. How fast is he – I mean, like, he looks fast on tape. He he, he can get around on the end of rounds. I'm giving him like a 4-4, like 4-4-5. Four, 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 yeah. What's I'll say did? something around that. Like, tape doesn't okay. lie. But probably right now he's he, he might be a 4-5 maybe. Oh, right, right now, there. yeah. So we'll see. Um, let us know about your next guy coming up. Who's My next, next guy, guy is dun, 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 who I say? Okay, Blake Corn. We're going to put out Blake Corn out here. Mm-hmm. Blake Corn, he's 5'7, 205. He started 24 in November. His forward time was a 4.53. Um, his three cone, 6.82. His shuttle was 4.12, which is very good for a shuttle. Um, mm-hmm. His his split was 1.58, and his vertical was 35 inches. Um, I think he has the best vision in this draft class, the best vision and the best footwork in this draft class. Um, and he's hella strong. He even beat Braylon Allen on the bench press. Braylon Allen bench press, I think, 26 times. He bench press 27 times. So he's fucking strong, right? Um, he did have an injury, right? He tore his, his meniscus tear last year. That's when he came back to school. So before his injury, he had real good burst. Um, he does like the top end speed. Like I said, he runs a four five three. Um, I think he needs to be in the right system. Um, I think he's still a day two, second round, third round. I think if he like if he goes to Harbaugh, I think that will that will propel him being drafted early in the in a, in a fantasy rookie draft. Um, he's a good goal line back. He's good at elusiveness. Um, like I said, he crushed the three cone drill. Oh, he crushed the three cone drill. That's what he crushed. It was three cone drill. what he crushed. Um, like I said, I think he needs to be in the right system and get the right draft capital. I comp him to Kyron Williams and to a Khalil Herbert. Um, but yeah, I think he has the best vision and footwork in class. And even uh, also his, I think his, the, it was the gauntlet drill or whatever drill he did. So Marshall's, so I'll give him an example. Marshall Moore ran a four four six, right? And he ran a four five three, but in that drill, he was way faster than Marshawn Lloyd in that whatever drill that was at the combine. So I okay. think he has the best vision in the footwork in the class. But like I say, he's twenty four, so he's going to get he's only getting one country. He's older, right? He's got he he, yep. he, has, he has a lot of miles. He has a lot of miles on him too. So be mindful of that. If I'm drafting him, yeah, he's a second. He's a sec, he's mid second to late second round person I'm drafting. But I do want to see the draft capital and what system he goes through. Yep. I don't have much to say about Blake Chrome. Blake Chrome is him, um, especially what he did. He's actually shown the type of running back that he is, uh, actually going back into college because he was supposed to come out last year, but he decided he to was. come back. He was. Um, mm-hmm. He did. So he decided to come back and he got himself a national championship. So – can't knock him for that. The next guy who uh, I'm going to bring up, I brought him up previously, maybe about a month ago, um, a guy that I'm kind of high on, uh, Mr. Audric Estin. I don't know if you what? know anything about him. You, you high yeah. on him? Audric Estin, man? Interesting. Yep. Go ahead. The reason why I'm high on him is because of what I see him bringing to the NFL. Is he going to mm-hmm. be that – that um, speedster back that's going to break away for like 20, 30-yard runs, things like that? No, that's not going to be him. 
But what I do see him as and being is that bruiser. When it comes yeah. down to fourth and goal, third and goal, you're going to bring in Audric Estime, and he is going to do what he's supposed to do. He's that big body type of running back for you. Um, I could push out all the stats that he did at Notre Dame. The dude ran the rock like he had thousands of thousand yard seasons there. And just mm-hmm. with him, like, yes, the only thing that's kind of iffy with him is his 40 time. We saw what it was up in the combine, and then a lot of people were saying that he ran something totally different. The tape does not lie up, day, up, on, right. up on the guy. Pro day times, I don't – all that is – and it's like what I said before. All the NFL drafts are like all the combine. It's just the underwear Olympics. That's all it is. Underwear Olympics. That's all it is. Just, just right. see what the guys do to put on the show, things like that. But give me the tape. The tape shows that he can ball and he can do what he needs to do just to get you as that nice running back. Can I see him being that potential first round pick running back? No, but I can see him up in the second round for somebody that's looking for that RB2, potentially maybe RB3 type of deal, depending on where he ends up going and who he ends up happening. Can he be the bell cow for all three downs? I don't think he can do that, but I do think he will be like a Jamal Williams type of running back up in the league where mm, he is getting that goal for carries and yeah. he's physically going to be out there just collecting stats and then taking it from somebody else. Some of the other um, places where I can see him going is going to um, – now this probably doesn't make any sense now because he should end up picking up Joe Mixon. But uh. can he go – I was thinking only because you have the guy – can he go to Buffalo? Buffalo does need that actual other type of running back that's a bruiser, which they've been coveting for the longest, but they've been using – I don't know what the word they're doing up there. They're Don't just you, using uh, – <laughs> Buffalo, man. They're using Cook and everything. But also another guy who just left, um, can he go to uh, the actual Green Bay Packers to actually be a backup behind uh, Josh Johnson? I mean, Josh Josh Jones. Sager? You think they need that? I mean, Josh is a three hundred there. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. We will. Hey, we we see what happened up in uh, Oakland didn't resign him. So, I mean, not Oakland, uh, the Las Vegas. But I'm just saying, like Austin Estime, like he's the type of running back that can be that that number two, that uh, go like that one two punch for you, similar to. Yeah, I agree with that. Let's say I know a lot of people might not know this running back because it's probably before some of the people this time that are actually watching this, but he could be like the Michael Turner of the actual Chargers Michael, back in the day when Michael Turner did his thing with, with LT. Um, I could see Austin Estime doing something similar to him and Michael Turner. Uh, so I got three things on Audrey Estime. I got best power back. Goal line back. He does have tight hips, no elusiveness. You don't have none of that. And he's not a good pass catcher. That's all I have on Audrey Estimate. He ran a, yeah, that's all I have on him. Okay. Obviously, he's not in my top five. He's not in my top five, but apparently, he's in your <laughs> top five. Oh, yeah. this year. All you right. know me. My Got a zig, one, one dag on other people's zag. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, my last person in that who's who's also in my top five running backs this year is Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd is 5'8", 220. He just turned 23 this January. Um, he ran a 4.46, 1.56 split, 36 inch vert, 118 on the broad. I have good elusiveness, good burst through the line. He has he has about the third best hands in the draft. He showed apparently he showed out in the receiving drills at the senior bowl. Um, he's powerful, he's a violent runner, he's tough to bring down. Good vision, quick feet. He can make the finish miss, and he has pretty good lateral movement. My comps to him are Isaiah Pacheco, Carlos High. Now, the negatives on him. So he's never rushed for um, he's an older back also, but he never rushed for a thousand yards in college. He's only out of 31 games. He only went over 100 yards four times. Um, his fumbles. He's had 10 fumbles in 360 carries. That's not good. He needs to work on that. Uh, 
His pass protection needs also needs work, but so does everybody else as, as a running back. Um, he did Torrey Terry's ACL in 2020. That's been three years, three, four years removed. So he should be fine there. His fumbles um, um, worries me. And now you said the fact that he never run for 1,000 yards in his, in his college career, but that means he has a lot of trail on tires. So even though he's older, he has a lot of trail on tires. He did come from what, South Carolina? Then he went to the USC. I think he is in my top five of running backs this year. Um, don't sleep on Marshawn Lloyd. I would like to see where he goes and what's his draft capital for him. But don't sleep on Marshawn Lloyd. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not a fan of Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, He's not a fan of Marshawn Lloyd. I heard I heard a little bit today. Some people had Marshawn Lloyd. They never won back. Just saying. He ain't mine. He ain't never won. But just what I heard in, a, in a one of the podcasters today, I gave him a number one. A lot of people up there. Top three, one, I say for real? Yeah. Yeah. So. Not over here, dog. Well, so, okay. So, Tim, why you like Marshall? It's just, it's just his height. Um, personally, I like when I'm looking at like a running back. When I'm looking at a running back, I'm looking at a guy that's at least – at six least foot. five ten, five eleven, six foot, mm. roughly around that. And the one thing that, so when I look at running backs, I'm looking at what made you with this whole new NIL deal. Like, why'd you transfer to like this actual other school? Like, is it because you couldn't like you went from the SEC, which is the power conference, to USC, the Pac-12, which is kind of weak. So mm. like, I'm trying to figure out like why you made that transition is because you wasn't getting that playing time like you were supposed to. Well, Caleb um, had recruited him from what I heard. So Caleb Williams recruited him to yep. USC. Yep. So it's just, I'm just not a fan of Marshawn Lloyd. Uh, that's just me personally. It's no, There's nothing to the athlete. I don't know him personally. It's just me. It's well, not no. him. It's just me. You take it, don't take it personal like that. No, nah, we ain't doing that. <laughs> but last but not least, guy? I had to throw out a little nice little. I try to give people that that like players that like people don't know anything about. Um, so let's go on and throw out Will Shipley out there. Let's go and throw out the bag of Swiss uh, Army knife. Will the Shipley. Swiss, the Swiss Army knife. Um, in 2022, where Will Shipley had 210 carries for 11 for 1,182 yards on 15 touchdowns, and he had 38 receptions. Um, this guy brings it all into the NFL. Um, people are trying to say that he's, he has that CMCS, and mm. we already know why he's probably saying that is because he is a white he's running a white, back. He's a, he's a white guy. He, he's, a, <laughs> he's a white running back. But personally, I think he can do – it all on the field. He can be that three down back because he can catch the ball also as well. So he's not a Chris McCaffrey, but he is like a poor man's Chris McCaffrey, which is not bad, mm -hmm. um, especially coming into the league where you are looking for guys that to that who can end up complimentary. Like I can see him going to maybe the Cardinals, maybe even going to the Patriots just to actually – um, with Ramondre Stevenson being there, like he's more of the bruiser type guy, but I did I need to bring somebody else in that can do that Swiss Army knife ish type deal with catching the passes coming out, and then eventually down the road he could possibly take over for Ramondre since Ramondre is getting up there up in age. Um, but just some of the things that I saw with him, he's stronger up in the passing game, excels in in catching screens, quick feet. Um, speed with, with uh, but he doesn't have that actual elite burst. But mm. he he still has that. He's sort of like he like he's fast on the field, but he doesn't have that that actual extra gear to get him to that next level. Mm. So uh, he improves. He he's a patient runner. Um, impressive with with the stop start agility, balance lateral uh, agility, and then uh, body control. Uh, some of the cons on him is he struggles to power through tackles due to to uh, his lack of weight, which is uh, – but um, all in all, like speedy but like elite breakaway speed, which is like what I said previously. Um, 
personally, I think if we can end up getting Will Shipley, like I can see him going up in some of the rookie drafts in the back half of the second round. Um, really? Okay. Only reason I'm saying the back half is because that's when people are going to start trying to get their running backs because if we already know this this class being front heavy up in wide receivers, all it's going to do is just keep pushing them down. If this was like an actual ordinary draft, you could physically see this guy going maybe up early second round. But that is who we have for um, what are your thoughts about Wolf Shipley? Do you have anything on him? Not much. I don't have too much on him. I think he's like two six. I heard, I heard he probably if he if he was. I heard he's a good receiver back, and I heard that if you could, if you squint your eyes, he's really more of a receiver part of the, than a running back because him going through the tackles, right? Um, like I said, he's not that powerful. Like, like you said, he lacks the power, um, so he could be better as a receiving. Receiver, so I probably see him as a third down back, receiving back. Uh, Will Shipley, yeah, he's yep, he's in the bottom half of my list. Yeah, I hadn't looked at him. Sorry, Will, Clemson running back. It's Sorry, okay, buddy. Will. It's okay, Will. But if you he'll, made it this far, I'll take him. Yeah, I'll take him. But if if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Oh, now. Yes, for my logos. it was. It has been a little longer than expected, um, but please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to give us a five-star ratings on all your Apple podcasts, all the podcasts, everything out there, um, anything you can think of. Man, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Let us know down up in the comments who are some of the guys that you are looking at. My yes. point pushed out oh, only six guys. Like It is the QB rankings. Not even QB rankings are QB prospects who we think you should be looking at right before draft time. Any last words that you would like to say, Mr. K Camp? Next year, next week we're doing wide receivers and tight ends, right? Tight ends. Yep. Wide receivers and tight ends. Awesome. Um hey, shout out to UConn winning national championship. Shout out to them back to back since first since 17 years, 2007. Mm. Shout out to UConn. Uh Hurley, you know. Uh shout out to him. Um, so yeah, we thank you all for coming out. We know you could have been anywhere in the world, but you were here with us, and we appreciate that. Spread love, not hate. Peace. Spread love, not hate. Peace. Thanks for checking out another episode of Serverless Green Iron Podcast, powered by Serverless Fantasy Sports. Make sure you stay tuned for the next episode.